So our project is again on encouraging the adoption of innovations in the construction sector for MSD prevention. Uh, we've been working on this project for quite a number of years. Really Enzo Garitano, Infrastructure Health and Safety Association. Desiree Kramer, Centre of Research Expertise for the Prevention of Musculoskeletal Disorders. Three, about three or four years ago when the WSAB put forward a MSD prevention toolkit. We were industry, presenting we to the room a six-year research study looking at the diffusion of innovations in the construction sector which could potentially reduce musculoskeletal disorders. In regards to MSD prevention, anybody, what's the big issue with MSDs in either construction or Ontario? Number one claim, that's correct. So, MSD, so in Ontario, about well, 45% of the LTIs are attributable to MSDs. Uh, the lost time days, the costs are in the same vicinity of the 40 to 45% range. Um, it is a six year study. It has been done in collaboration between Cree MSD and the Infrastructure Health and Safety Association. It's a very collaborative research project. We have got about three phases at the moment looking at the networks that are in the construction sector as potential communication vehicles, the ways in which communication does take place within the construction sector and the barriers and facilitators to potential awareness and knowledge of MSDs and thirdly we've been looking at the innovators, the facilitators within the construction sector who have been adopting innovations and looking at what characterizes them and the companies in which they are based. Uh, other studies have also confirmed that construction does have a, a high severity rate though when it does come to the injuries. So when the MSDs do occur, it comes to the point where they just can't work anymore. Um, so it is a concern in the industry. The main ones that we see through the data, uh, upper extremities and, and lower back are the significant uh, contributors to the MSD problem at this point. So we're looking at any reductions in that type of activity. We're looking at bringing in a tool that helps to facilitate work overhead. Um, or work that occurs at the ground level, that there are tools and, and methodologies that allow you to be in a more appropriate uh, posture to do the work. Construction is heavy work. Manual materials handling dominates how people do their work. A lot of their work is done below their feet level. A lot of the work is done way above their shoulder and head level. Um, awkward positions, heavy vibration, and very heavy lifting dominates the work that's done in the construction sector. As far as the private companies go, we've been, we've been presenting information to both labor and management uh, groups. So we've uh, ranged from safety groups to our labor management network within IHSA. We've got uh, 16 regional committees and 23 trade committees to, to bring forward the information in the study and to get their contributions. So the uh, private sector industries or companies have been partners in the research, as well as the unions being a significant uh, participant in this. There are going to be three next stages. Um, one large company seems to be very engaged in adopting some major innovations and we will look at that process. Another large company, which we actually mentioned, does have leasing of equipment and we will track who the people are who are leasing. And thirdly, we need to look at the inaccessible, the companies which are not that easy to reach, the workers who are not that easy to reach, to find different strategies to engage them. And whether it's partnering with suppliers or partnering with manufacturers, um, again, it's a fine line between promoting a product versus promoting a concept. And it's the concepts we're trying to promote, not the product.